Hey guys, welcome back to Brazen and Bold Productions and today we're going to show you a new material which is called Profoam Clay. Profoam Clay is a foam based modeling material. I will now show you a variety of ways in which I've used this new material. First off, freeforming. So I will just use my hands to form the clay into a shape I desire. And from what I've seen so far, the material is very, very light, so it feels very light. Uh, more akin to a bread dough than to a sculpting material, like Sculpey or clay. And you can get pretty good results just by forming it with your hands. I'm looking at the camera at the same time, so I don't really know what I'm doing right here, but it's fine. It's gonna be fine. Um, the thing is, the material itself is very flexible, so it won't necessarily stay the way uh, you sculpt it into the first time you sculpt it, so you don't, uh, you, you won't be able to just sculpt it once and then leave it like that, so if you want to bend it, you will see it, it retracts backwards a little bit, so you'll have to bend it a couple of times, and just, I'm just gonna go up here and show that. So it won't stay that way exactly, so you have to do it a couple of times to really, really, really keep it that way. I've noticed that when the clay seems to get a bit dried up, you can just take a little bit of water and moisten it up again. And so it's there is malleable. So you can keep sculpting even though it starts drying up a little bit. So it will probably take a little bit longer to dry out. And the drying period is about 10 to 24 hours, depending on the thickness of the sculpt. And you can use sculpting tools, just regular old sculpting tools, to put details into it. You need to be careful though, because unlike other modeling materials like Sculpey or clay, um, you can actually rip this material if you push into it too much with your sculpting tools. So you will be you will need to be careful when doing that. So it's soft touches, soft strokes. And from what I've seen so far is when the material dries out completely, you can actually um, sand it like foam. So since it's foam based, that makes sense. I haven't tried that out myself yet, but I will in the next couple of days. And I will show you the results then. So another cool thing that you can do with this is you can press it into molds and I have here one of our silicone molds. You should always be careful to close them up. You should close the lid tightly because it will dry out in air. So what you do is you take a bit of pro foam clay, you just mush it into a silicone mold. See that it fills every nook and cranny nice and tight. And as soon as you think you're ready, just pull it out quickly. And you should get a really nice pull out of this. Yeah, that's nice. The cool thing about that is as soon as you get out the pull, you can just leave it there, let it dry out. As I said, the thicker it is, the longer it takes to dry out. In this sense, it's similar to Fimo, I guess. But the neat thing about this is as soon as it dries out completely, it's still soft and a bit flexible, which would be great, I guess, for some armor cosplays. And it's it won't... Oops, okay, that didn't happen. You didn't see that. I didn't fumble. I'm a professional. And as you can see, it's still very nice and soft, which is either good or bad if you want that, but it's cool, I think, because you could make flexible armor designs with this, or you can use it as a decoration on pieces that need to stay flexible a little bit. And 
I will try and paint this in the next couple of days and I will see how that works out. And the cool thing is you can see here I made like a, a little bit of a dragon skin. It's a very thin plate. I just sculpted this with a, with a sculpting tool and it's still flexible and it's pretty strong so you can't really rip it apart. Okay, you can rip it apart, but you need to be really strong like me. Still going, okay. And what I did with this just a couple of minutes ago, I made this horn. Uh, it's just a very simple horn. I made it in about five minutes. And I thought it would be cool because a lot of people always ask us, how do you make horns? And it's always, okay, you take a form and you try to... You know, uh, either you carve it out of uh, foam and then you put warble on top of it or you sculpt it out of clay and then you make a silicone mold and then you cast it in, in resin or you use a third method that doesn't come to mind right now. And I thought, okay, what about people that don't want to go through all the trouble and just want to make nice little horns that don't break as soon as you use them for a cosplay? I thought this might actually work out pretty good. And it's a simple horn and you can, you know, put it on a ribbon and wrap it around your head or, I don't know, glue it to some sort of foam armor and I think it looks kind of nice and the cool thing is as soon as this is completely dry I can still sand it down a little bit and give it a few edges and, 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 and scratches and I think that could look pretty good. Am I kawaii yet? From what I've gathered so far, um, Profoam clay is an interesting sculpting material. It's unlike anything I've used before. Um, unlike Sculpey, where you can s where every detail just remains the way you put it in, this will retract a little bit because it's still flexible. But this can be great for organic forms. Um, I can see this, for example, in use for Monster Hunter armors or, you know, I don't know, Legend of Zelda stuff or, or just organic bones and, and fangs and claws stuff. And it's pretty interesting. Um, the thing I like about it the most would be that it's, that it's foam. So you can actually just use this like you would EVA foam and sculpt it, which is really cool. And you don't have to worry about um, making it viable for cosplay because it's made for cosplay. So you can just use this to make a couple of details for your armor build or for a, a weapon. You can just sculpt stuff that you like out of it or you can just toy around with it. It's really cool. And the thing about it I, I don't like that much is the waiting time. So you need to wait about 20 hours for it to dry out completely. And that's the longest time. So, <laughs> because I'm just an impatient guy. But it's, all in all, I must say I really like it so far. And I will get back to you as soon as I know how, it's, how it reacts to paint. How it reacts to different sorts of paints and, and how the flexibility might hinder a, a, a classic paint job with acrylics, but until then I bid thee farewell and hopefully you learn something. Bye meatbags!